There we go. So I had a funnel on this thing. Where'd the funnel go? Right there. With a piece of wire directing the water into a bucket. So the fellows at Argo in Utica, cold country, that's for sure, sent me a new well. And I'm putting some Teflon tape on it. I'll put this one back in the Ziploc bag and we'll send it back to them. And how am I going to put the camera here? Hope it doesn't fall over and crunch the lens like I did in my last one. Took a picture and tipped over. And I will put some Teflon tape on the tapered pipe thread. I've already got six or seven wraps. I think we got enough. Then, hopefully, I'll take the screw out because so I can put the socket on the 7 8 socket. The screw that holds the probe in, the temp probe. And I will stick this back in its appropriate hole right there. After I... Did you remember to turn off electricity? I'll let it cool a little bit. So the element shouldn't get overheated. It runs at almost 170 degrees which is 80 Celsius, which is the same temperature that Mercedes recommends to check your transmission oil with my new dipstick that I forgot to use yesterday. I got a dipstick shipped from California, $13 with free shipping. Too bad I didn't pick it up when I was there because I went to a junkyard in, was it in Indio? Ontario. Went to a junkyard in Ontario and it was one or two towns over where they sold the Made in China Universal Extra Long Transmission Dipstick. The fellow that delivered our windows yesterday is driving a Toyota, I think it's a V8 pickup truck. Four door, short bed, medium bed. Gotta get that screw at the top. And he's got 240,000. I asked him if he ever changed the transmission oil. He says, nope, it's lifetime oil. He's going to be getting a new one, I think, soon. Never change the transmission oil. 240000 I guess if nothing breaks and it doesn't wear out. So I can put the screw in now and get access to it. Oh, nope. Maybe I'll turn it a little bit more so I can put the screwdriver into the screw that holds the temperature probe in place. Made in USA Craftsman. Not anymore. Made in China now. Exact same ratchet. This is an older one I've had for 30 years. Hard to believe. 30 years. Now I can stick the probe back in, which is right here. And the screw doesn't have to be tight because the probe is just checking for temperature. The well is what has to be tight and properly soldered, which this one apparently wasn't. Junk. Alrighty. Put it back together and put the cover on finally. Be nice. Put a cover on. <laughs> like my dash and my suburban. <laughs> Alright. Water on. Water on. Might get some air out of the bleeder. And can crank her up. Circulation pump on. Poof. Now I gotta go into the quick startup mode. I think you press the up and down simultaneously for two seconds. I think <laughs> it's all in the instruction manual. It's right over here. Quick start. The water cutoff, anti-short cycle timer, heating call satisfied, flow sensor input, load management control, non-volatile memory, pump exercising, anti-short cycle, dry fire test. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, turn the breakers on. Forgot about that.
<laughs> problem solved, huh? <sighs> Let's try this again. There. I think we press the up and down. I don't remember. There's too many buttons on this thing. Too much of electronic computer components and my friend's son has been making me some business cards. Corvair Wild on YouTube business cards. Fun cards. So I tinkered with it a little bit. Oh boy, oh boy. Gotta have patience. Patience. Anyway, so get them done. Different ones. Corvair ones, t ruck ones, Blazer ones. Oh, might have hit the right buttons up and down. No more air in the system. I should bleed it. Because I had air there. No more leaks, I hope. Alrighty. Cover. Meat boiler. I'm going to wait to see if it leaks. Shouldn't leak. That was just an anomaly. Zone 1. Calling for 